We are in Opelika, Alabama at The Nest, which is the coffee space associated with the Chirpwood Art Gallery. My name is Scott Moody and this is my place. We started out as a picture frame company. Instead of buying molding, uh, we decided to make our molding from scratch. When my wife said it's time to leave the basement barn and garage of our house and, and have a, an actual commercial spot, we chose this location because we could manufacture on one side and retail out the other. The people who liked us first were artists, and there really was no place in Opelika for local art. So we became an art gallery, sort of accidental. We're an accidental art gallery. We have a patent pending frame, we call a two stick frame. And most importantly, uh, half our profits goes to something called Bridge to Rwanda, the scholars program there. And I spend about a month a year in Rwanda these days teaching. And so that's the purpose behind it all. I'm an electrical engineer by degree out of Auburn. I felt that my calling in life was to teach, so I went back and got a master's in mathematics education, and I was in the high school classroom for 25 years teaching calculus and physics and robotics. When I got to the next phase of my life, I wanted to do things I hadn't done before. So I wanted to do something uh, for purpose, to be a platform of influence and a vehicle for good. I wanted to do something entrepreneurial, and I wanted to do something uh, that let me be creative. We started out uh, truly not knowing what we were doing. The, the thing that I had going for me is that I'm a really detail-oriented person and I have a good eye. And so I knew what I wanted my frames to look like. For the first, I hate to admit it, almost year that I was trying to do chirpwood, I was mainly experimenting with recipes. I took every combination of stain, oil, if you take you know, steel wool and put it in vinegar and you get a solution that will age wood, things like that. And I really worked on getting patina. I would walk in the woods and look at weathering pieces of wood and I would say, what makes that have a look that is an authentic look? And I, and I decided that it takes at least three colors and it, it, there's a texture and a lot of different things that combine to make patina. We have two types of wood we use. We have solid uh, native oak and we have solid native pine. Once that goes through the molder, we cut miters, we wire brush if we need to, to uh, age the wood. And at that point we glue it and put it together with a, a dovetail system. And once the glue is dried, we have a sanding table where we hand sand every single piece that goes out. And that's actually more delicate than you might think. You're sanding it before it's finished, but sometimes it'll be finish one, come back to the sanding table, finish two, come back to the sanding table. Most of the things that we sell have at least three trips to and from. We used to paint it all by hand. Turns out that's uh, hard to get much production if you paint it all by hand. So we now have a uh, Wendell sprayer and we keep our different paints in different uh, mason jars. Doing things that aren't cookie cutter kind of sets us apart. I had a, a company that we love and that we've done business with for a while. They asked me to come up with a, a less expensive way and easier to transport frame. And there's a generic term, something called a poster rail. They have magnets sometimes. And he asked me if I would consider making something like that. I thought, why do you need two pieces of wood on top and two pieces of wood on the bottom? You just need a wood with a groove in it. And I fiddled around with clips for a little while and lo and behold, it worked. And, and I thought, I can make the same patina, the same handmade look uh, with these, this poster rail system. Starting a business out of nothing, except your ideas, is hard. And, and, and every single step of the way, I just don't, it's amazing that anybody is, is successful sometimes. It seems that way anyway. Uh, and, and so that's been my, one of my takeaways. Just when you see somebody who's got that little small business, but they manage to support a family, just how amazing that is.